right. Well, welcome to our final session of the afternoon. Denise and I are so fortunate to work closely with our guest panelist, Jessica Harry, as members of the Board of Directors for the International Clarin Association. Jessica has also been assisting us with the technological aspects of our Amakitia Clarinet Extravaganza Weekend, and we are so excited to welcome her for this session on how to use the ICA website. It's been great. We've had a wonderful day. Yeah. yeah. And Jessica is amazing. We love her. Uh, Jessica has served in the ICA, has served the ICA in various capacities since early 2016 and now serves as the Executive Director of Operations and Associate Editor of the Clarinet Journal. She is active as a freelance clarinetist and teacher in the Columbus, Ohio area and as a Diderio Reserve Method Clinician for the state of Ohio. Jessica received her DMA in performance from Michigan State University, her MA in performance from Middle Tennessee State University, and her BM in music education in performance from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. We're so glad you're with us, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be here. And I hope that everyone in chat uh, has at least heard about the ICA, um, the International Clarinet Association, as we are all affiliated, um, repping, uh, is a... <laughs> group of clarinetists um, spread out all over the world um, with a common goal of sharing our love and passion for the clarinet with each other and with those who may have an interest um, in learning more about the instrument. And we work really, really hard each year to create um, great content for people um, about the clarinet. And also we produce uh, an annual festival called Clarinet Fest, which is held uh, in various locations. Um, all over the world actually and um, this year unfortunately due to COVID we had to cancel Clarinet Fest 2020 which was going to be held in Reno in June and it's going to be amazing um, and so next year we're hoping things will be in order and we can see everyone at Clarinet Fest 2021 in Fort Worth Texas um, so that's one of the big things we do it's if you've not been to a Clarinet Fest it's incredible <laughs> it's it's a really incredible experience to be surrounded by so many uh, talented and passionate people and it gives you the chance to meet and and just get along with all the people who have the same passion as you and it's it's awesome and um, we will be sharing more and more about Fort Worth as we get closer and the, the artistic director Mary Druon and her team are working incredibly hard to plan on a really good festival for you so I will talk more about that but I guess I should probably show you what the website has to offer um, and let me get the screen share going here. So, uh, can you all see this? Yep. Yep, it's good. Okay. So, when you first go to clarinet.org, which is our website address, you're going to be taken to our homepage. And um, the homepage has a scroller that comes across the, the front here that offers um, sort of like hot topics, if you will. So you see the blog, we have a special student rate right now until December of this year, $10, $10. If you are a student, please take advantage of that. It's an online membership, but it gets you all of the, the journals um, in the back issue library, um, and including all of the other benefits that everyone gets. You just don't get the print magazine, but you know a lot of people are shying away from print anyway, because it takes up a lot of space. I can tell you my entire garage is filled with back issues. <laughs> um, so, so you'll see information about the student membership. We also have, whoops, I hit back on my mouse. I got a new mouse and it has like buttons on the side. Okay, um, so student membership, information about Clarinet Fest, um, the upcoming festival. This will change every year to feature the, the newest festival that's coming up. We have an official Threadless store um, that has shirts like this, we have um, merchandise from our Plays On events. You can get coffee mugs and all kinds of really, really cool ICA merchandise there. Um, that's all directly affiliated with Threadless, but we just have our designs hosted there. And as the year goes on, we're gonna be having some competitions to design really cool um, clarinet themed uh, shirts and mugs and things like that. So be sure to stay tuned for that on social media. Um, then we have our blog, which is primarily maintained by Jenny McClay. And um, the blog is fantastic. You could just click the banner and it's taken you directly to um, all of the recent articles um, that have been featured on here. Um, a lot of this stuff is, you know, directly related to stuff in the journal. So you'll see some additional content. So for example, 
you might see an interview that was cut short in the magazine and it'll be extended online. So you, you can see a little bit more detail. We have special video content that's um, within an article. Um, there's just tons. Now, once you go into the blog, if there's something that you, for example, just are really interested in and you're looking to get more information and wonder, hey, did the clarinet, did the clarinet blog write anything about reads? I'm curious, I really am looking for information about reads, which is related to our last panel. <laughs> Here's an article from uh, November 1st, 2019 that Jenny made that is just a collection. It's basically like an annotated bibliography here and it's got the volume number and the issue number and the page number of all these different articles that you can read about reads, right? I'm looking for information about Clarinet Fest 2019. I wanted to know who performed there and, and what was going on. There's a, some reviews about concerts and things that happened those days during the concert. And that'll be true for Clarinet Fest 2021. Next year, we'll have tons of write-ups and videos and things like that posted here. So there's infinite amount of resources here just within the blog. And that's not even, um, that's not even including the journal itself, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, this is going to change a little bit in a few months. And we can't really share a whole lot about it. But um, we're going to be adding some really great video content. And we already started to do that a little bit with the ICA plays on. But the YouTube channel is going to start looking really beefy. <laughs> and uh, there's going to be some great tips and, and information for people who are looking to learn about read adjusting, about how to make the best embouchure, about you know how to select a clarinet, all kinds of different topics. And so one of the things that we really want from you um, is for you guys to tell us what you want to see, right? Email me, email Jenny, email Denise and Diane and let them know that you want to see this kind of content and you feel like we need help with this and, and we are going to work our hardest to make sure that you see that stuff, okay? So that's the blog. Let's go back to home here. Blog, Clarinet Fest, Threadless. That's pretty much all that's here. Now you also see these four squares at the, underneath that. These are just going to be kind of the same thing. It's more like hot topic stuff. Same thing, Clarinet Fest. Um, we recently had an online event called ICA Plays On where we did a couple days similar to this event um, where we had topics um, ranging from all kinds of different things. And so what we did was we collected all of those um, panels to the one location. And so later this year and possibly in January, we're going to host another event in the ICA Plays On series. And so you can come here and you'll see the winter version and all of the Zoom links will be here. Um, it may look different in December, we're not sure, but um, it, it will be something similar to this. And it's a good place for us to, to kind of house um, all of that information. So that's that. Uh, then this, this Clarinet Resource Library is just a direct link to the James Gillespie Library, which I'll show you in just a moment, which is a membership only uh, login perk. Do you have to actually have a membership to be able to access that? But you can get a membership for ten dollars if you're a student. <laughs> um, and finally, on the bottom corner here on the right, you have the clarinet sample edition, which we update regularly, and it's just a PDF of a recent issue of the clarinet. So if you're not a member and you want to see what the clarinet journal looks like and what kind of content you can expect, um, you'll be able to um, access the full issue here. Um, usually, it's a couple months old. That way, you can at least get a good idea. So this is the March issue of this year. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory for those um, special things. Now we have some drop-down menus, which everyone is familiar with. Who we are, this is um, where you're gonna find your current list of officers, um, our new president, past president, president-elect, secretary, treasurer, et cetera, a new international vice president, and Eddie Vanastoiza and our affiliate board, staff, contact information as well. So if you need to contact someone specifically, we've got their information provided here. We also list our honorary members here and our legends, which are a category of people who may not have been around when we had <laughs> instituted our honorary member um, category. So these are people that had passed on, but they're legends in their own right. So we have that here, competition coordinators, lots and lots. Here's important information for people who may be overseas. We have continent chairs and state chair, uh, country chair contact information. So if you reside in say Ireland, for example, and you need some information about being an ICA member, or if you have an event that you've got coming up that you wanted to share with the ICA membership, you can reach out to your country or um, state chair 
and they can provide that information to us and we can disseminate it to the to the membership so that other people are aware that you have something happening right so there's a lot of names here and it's a lot we'll, we'll try to make this look a little better in the future but this is this is a, a dump of information <laughs> a lot of information that can be found here um, and then we also have um, published here our policies, our value statement, our commitment to diversity and inclusion. So if you ever wanted to know where we stand, this is where you're going to find that information. Um, now, membership. If you're not a member, you should join. It's a wonderful organization. Um, we, we do all kinds of things um, throughout the year, not just our Clarinet Fest, but with our journal and, and our social media accounts. We're very active. So how do you join? Why should I join? Well, you have lots of benefits by being a member. Um, most importantly, in my view, is, is the, the, communi the community that you join, the connections that you gain by becoming a member of this group of, of exclusive but lovely and opening, <laughs> open uh, community of clarinetists. So that's, that's the number one benefit in my view, but you also get a subscription to a quarterly academic journal called The Clarinet that is edited by the wonderful Rachel Yoder. Um, you saw just a sample issue a few minutes ago. Um, that's just one. Uh, we're on volume 48, if you can believe it. And that's four issues per year. Um, volume 48 starts in December. So if you sign up now, uh, you will, you'll gain access starting for the December issue. And it's going to be really great. We'll have some inf information about Clarinet Fest 21 in there as well. Um, we have events like the ICA Plays On. And some of those events may be membership only. So in the future. Right now, we're, we're pretty much hosting everything for free, but we're looking at um, ways that we can make the, the membership be more valuable to you. And I think one of those ways is to have private and exclusive events, but we certainly don't want to keep content from people. That's not, that's not our, our game here. So, but masterclasses, performance, if you want to play at Clarinet Fest for somebody, we have masterclasses all the time, and, and those are um, only open to members at this time. Uh, we offer discounts through Anderson Musical Insurance. You can gain access to the Naxos Music Library, which has tons of incredible recordings that you won't find necessarily on other streaming platforms. Some of them are there, but, you know, there are a lot of recordings that are proprietary to Naxos Music Label, and they're all available um, at the Music Library. Uh, the Research Center, I can't even explain to you what a great resource that is, and a lot of people don't know about that, mm -hmm. but we offer an incredible collection of, I guess I should probably hide this while I type my password in here. <laughs> I should have created a spoof account, but I didn't have time for that. <laughs> um, we offer a collection of scores and um, just an immense amount of, of clarinet related content, including historical documents and recordings and things like that. Um, they're housed at the University of Maryland library. And if you are an ICA member, you can request that content be sent to you if it is able to be transported. Um, and that includes an immense amount of, of music that um, may not be available through other sources. So I highly encourage you to check that out. You go through here and you have to register for an account to request information. So you would do that. And then you'll go through the score database and find what you would like. And you request that just like you would through any other library. Um, and then it takes, you know, you can get up to 15 pieces sent to you just um, for, for study, for purpose of just like looking and, and trying to find good pieces of music that you may not be aware of. And I know that we just received um, a couple weeks ago, a massive donation from uh, yeah. a former member who had retired and moved on. And so we're still processing that and it's not there yet, but we'll let you know when that collection is available. And I think Denise, didn't you receive a donation? We have the, the entire collection of Kalman Opperman's music library, which is going to the ICA. Yeah, it's an incredible. So, so you'll be able to see, and it's really great. Some of these scores that we receive as donations have um, handwritten notes um, from, from older teachers and to see the writing um, that was there is, is really kind of interesting and inspiring in its own way. So again, resource library for members an incredible resource for you, especially if you are a graduate student who's looking to do some in, in research. Um, I would like to see somebody write some papers about the ICA resource library and what kind of content is included in there because um, it's not just scores. There are pictures, um, historical um, programs from past clarinet fests and other clarinet events that, you know, happen, you know, the clarinet fest is almost 50 years old, if you didn't know that. Um, and 
So there are 50 years worth of programs and recordings and things like that that are available in this resource library. So I could talk about that all day. So you saw that I logged in, right? Um, once you log in, you're taken to a membership only area and there's a bunch of different um, aspects here. So let me just go to my page. So you have your, mem this is what you're gonna see when you first log in. You're gonna see your, your membership page with your card there. Please don't steal my identity, uh, <laughs> my, my clarinet identity. And you can change your, your subscription type here. So if you're uh, an online and print member and you wanted to switch to um, online only, or if you are a person who's recently retired and you're looking to get a senior membership, you can do that here. Uh, you can also change email subscriptions. If you want to get the hosted email blast that we send out from our advertisers, you can do that here. You can also opt out here. Um, but yeah, you can pay invoices for Clarinet Fest and everything is going to be here. You can change your address if you move. Uh, I'm not going to show my address here, but it's down there at the bottom. <laughs> so just at the top here, um, these are a registration. If you are invited artists to perform at a festival, you're going to see that tab. Here, you can follow the link and, and register for Clarinet Fest as an artist. If you're not an artist, you'll see this Clarinet Fest general tab and you can go through that link to register for Clarinet Fest as a participant. You can also search a membership directory. Just, you know, Denise, <laughs> first name. And you can find out very, you know, what information that person would like to share, but this is only accessible through membership like if you have a membership, you can do that, but that's the only time. Now, we also have, we talked about the resource. Here's Naxos, it's login information. This is um, user restricted. So only a certain number of users can access Naxos at the same time. I think we have a, a number of like five. Um, doesn't really happen that often where we get overloaded on people using Naxos because a lot of times you can find that information on Spotify as well, but it's there. And if you'd like to use it, um, please do so. If you are a country chair, if you'd like to find out about your country chair, your state chair's information about what's happening, we usually have um, an e-blast that comes out to your email, but um, sometimes posts will go here as well in the member login. And finally on this section, the James Gillespie Library, which is amazing. <laughs> um, these are all PDFs uh, of the library of every issue all the way back to the very beginning of the journal. And it's so amazing to be able to go. I actually just had a request from somebody who ordered some older issues from like volume 14. Um, I think it was Osiris Molina from the University of Alabama ordered some really old issues. So I had to go in my garage and dig around and find those because uh, he wanted a physical copy of them. And we do have those and you can order them and I, I can mail them to you. Um, but you can also get those right here. And the, the PDFs are good quality. And one thing, one of our projects going forward is we're going to make these PDFs work better for you so that when you open them, it's easier to navigate. And I've done that for the last three issues when I upload these. We can use September, it's a beautiful issue. Um, we've added the ability to click and be taken to advertisers. We've added the ability to click within links. We've had that for a while, but now you can actually click each article and be taken directly to that article navigation wise. So if there's something that you're really in a hurry to read, you don't have to scroll through the entire article. Um, and then you can obviously hit home and get make, taken back to the, the beginning. So little things like that to make it easier, we're gonna have to go back through 50 years worth of journals to add that feature. And of course there are no websites. <laughs> that was one of the weird things. I was telling my husband, I'm flipping through an, an issue from 87, 1987. And I'm like, this is so weird. It was like called today to, uh, you know, now accepting Visa and MasterCard, there's no websites or anything. So it's a really interesting trip to go through some of the older issues and remember if you were still alive at that time, what that was like. <laughs> and if not, be put into a situation where you're like, wow, that's weird. They don't have a website? That's odd. <laughs> so uh, are you still seeing the issue? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And now you're seeing the, I can never tell if I'm sharing my screen what it's actually sharing. And yeah, you see the archives now. Okay, good. So right. I highly recommend if you remember to get in here and take a look. Now it might be like, oh, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I have something specific that I want to know about and I don't know where to go. 
because there's just all these issues. And you can kind of get an idea of the featured article based on what the cover is showing you. But there's so much more inside of that um, issue. And one of the things that you can do is use our, do you see this now, the index? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is an index um, curated by Emily Kursky. Um, and it is an immense resource for trying to find in collaboration with the, the, the Gillespie Library, what it is that you're looking for. So say for example, you are looking for something about reads because that just seems to be the topic of the day. This will help you to find, you know, here's uh, Roger Salander wrote an article in 1975 called What Now? The Continuing Saga of Roger's Reads. <laughs> What's it about? I have no idea. I have not read this one, but it might be something that you might be interested in, especially if you're doing research on a specific topic. You know, you can, I want to, I want to find something about Debussy. Does anybody talk about Debussy? Well, sure. Here's a, here's some music reviews which we've recently added. Thank you so much to Emily for adding that because before it was just reviews. Now it's review and then also the pieces, the CDs, like it's just an immense amount of work and it's really useful. So eventually we'll find, there. well, you saw it. WC's work for clarinet part one, part two. Um, those are great articles, by the way, incredible. Um, here's one about syrinx. Like you can find so much information that, that may not be available to you in a more readily consumable format, I guess is the word that I'm looking for. It's just, it's really um, intuitive. And then it'll tell you the page numbers if they're available um, that you can find that. So say we want to look up this article by Galper from the 91 issues is February volume 18, number two. Okay. We're going to go back to our page here. It's going to take me a minute to navigate all the way over to <laughs> 18. Scroll, yeah. <laughs> we do have to. Nineteen, eighteen, number two. What a great cover. Go. I love that <laughs> cover. Uh, so this is March 1991, February, March. Um, look at these old ads. <laughs> okay. This obviously doesn't have the same functionality yet because we haven't gotten there, but eventually you'll be able to just click right here in the um, table of contents and be taken to page 25. But here we go. <laughs> here we go. So here's that article right here. Um, the transcription obviously by Galper on this wonderful piece and just, you know, it's that easy. Use the index to find the information that you need. And I think, I'm not sure, did I tell you where the index was? I don't think I did. No. Well, well. You know, the other thing I like about the index is that it's an Excel file and you can actually sort by category. Yep. Like sometimes I will just sh sh ugh, sort performance and pedagogy articles. I think that's the, um, so I see all the pedagogy articles, boom, boom, boom. Um, rather than how right now it's navigated, yeah, it's uh, sorted out by volume. Yeah, so but, you can yeah. just come over here. Yeah. Highlight the, the category, although I'm, I'm in like column number 2500 or something. <laughs> so let's just scroll up here. When you've got selected the category and then you can go over here to sort and filter, sort yeah. A to Z. And it's gonna, it's gonna yeah. show you, like these are all ICA related events. These are conferences right. and workshops competitions and 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 it's an, a, a wonderful resource for sorting so you'll get master class clarinetist and interviews about their playing so it's you're right diane that is that is a really good way to sort of um to go through that and the same is true for reviews although i think the reviews might be under the actual article title or you know even even author if you're mm -hmm. doing research by about a specific um, clarinetist and you want to know what they wrote about in the clarinet journal, you can, you know, obviously some people have written more than others. Um, right. A lot of these are reviews. A lot of people spend a lot of time doing reviews. So we have, we're grateful for them, but uh, you know, any, any way that you'd like to search that is most convenient to you, um, the, the, it can be done in Excel. So, so you use this Excel document um, to find the most recent version of that. You want to go to the clarinet journal tab, journal information. 
and it's just right here kind of hidden and I can make that like larger. <laughs> I think I might, I might edit that and do that, but that's where that is. And we'll continue to update that every single issue. Emily does that for us so that it's the most recent information. Um, we also, um, I think we have a partnership with one of the journal companies, ProQuest, I think it is, and they are scanning and archiving specific issues and articles. So if you have a subscription to ProQuest or you use it through your university, you should see some of our articles start to come up in their searches as well. But this is the best place to get this information right from the source um, so you don't have to go through an outside service. Um, and maybe in the future, we'll be able to make this even um, easier to use. And that's the idea is to always improve and always make that, you know, because this is such a wealth of information. If you, if there's anything you want to learn, um, it's a perfect place to do it. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't mention, many, sorry, I'm go ahead. Sorry. Do you remember, do you remember how many years it's been since the journals have now been online? Has it been about 10? Um, it, I don't know exactly. I would have to, to look, but um, we've been online since I was with the, the group since, since 20, 2016 when I started working, we were putting stuff yeah. online then, but I believe it was 2010 at least. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, for some of our older ICA members, they might not know that this is a feature, you know, so yeah. 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 Um, couple other things that I forgot to mention about the blog. Um, one of the recent things that I did was for our reviews, uh, I wanted to, we have music reviews and we're certainly, um, we post them online and they're also in the journal. But for audio reviews, to encourage more people to be able to listen as they read these reviews, we've been started embedding um, a Spotify playlist with any um, pieces that are reviewed, any CD that gets reviewed. And if the recording is on Spotify, it's gonna be in this playlist here and you can actually click in the browser and, and listen to the recording and then it'll direct you out to Spotify to be able to listen on your own time. And I've curated that playlist and I'll do one for every issue. And that also includes every non-standard music review collection that we have. Um, we, we publish them a couple, every other month, I think we have a collection of music reviews that go or audio reviews that go up. So that will be here um, on each page in the blog for TCO. Um, so we also have information about our competitions. If you are in high school and you're looking to do the competition, these are all updated recently, um, getting prepared for 2021. So you can see the repertoire, the requirements. Um, uh, applications are not open yet, but they will be um, pretty soon, probably in October. We'll have that ready to go so you can get um, an early start for that. Also contacts um, for the coordinator for the competition is always going to be listed there. The Clarinet Fest tab has historical Clarinet Fests, um, which will probably, some of these are going to go away pretty soon because we've got to add 2022 and 2023 to this tab, so we don't want it to be overwhelming. But if you click on this, you're taken to the information page. It's going to tell you um, a little bit of information, as much as is available uh, currently, about Clarinet Fest. And soon it will have the artist roster after the um, committee has deliberated. By the way, if you are looking to apply, the deadline is... In three days. <laughs> so um, I hope that you'll consider applying to perform or do a lecture at Clarinet Fest 2021 in Fort Worth. I know it's a scary time right now and it's hard to think about that, but we're being optimistic and be um, assured that even if we're not able to meet in person, we're going to have a festival some way online. Uh, we'll figure it out together. So please consider applying. You can follow the link here at the bottom. Um, too accepted to, to take care of that. Uh, this year we have three different types of application. This is the first time we've ever done this. And we thank Mary Druon for, for setting all of this up in her, it's like her brainchild. But we have the showcase stage, which is specifically geared towards um, directors of small ensembles and, and, and clarinet choirs and quartets and whatnot. And that's gonna be set up outside of the exhibit hall and people are just gonna come on stage and play something real quick and then, then move on. It's a really great way to get young students involved. So you can apply for that under the showcase stage tab here. We also have the clarinet learning community, which is a brand new um, way that we're going to categorize different types of clarinet content for different um, 
ability and experience levels. So um, this will also be reflected in the program book. Um, we're thinking of ways to code it somehow, we have symbol or color coding, uh, definitely color coding in the app, the mobile app. So that if you are uh, a young student and you want content that is geared towards your age group or your ability level, uh, you can attend specific, obviously everything is open to anyone who wants to go to anything, but if you want to be specific about it, you can, you can certainly know what you're getting into um, and you don't show up to a masterclass on um, graduate level extended techniques and pieces of music <laughs> and, and just be overwhelmed and confused. We want the experience to be as welcoming and, and interesting to you as uh, possible. So that's what this is about. And we're hoping to carry this torch on going forward, starting in this year and then also in, in Reno in 2022, Denver in 2023. So you can apply for this category and um, it's kind of similar to the past application wise. And um, you just would select what appropriate age level or skill level, and then also give us a description of what your topic is about and then go through the rest of the application process the same as you always have. So that's where that is. Now, what am I missing here? History. Would you like to learn a little bit about the Clarinet Association? <laughs> Would you like to learn a little bit about where we came from? We have uh, a great historian, Alan Sanek, spent a lot of time going through this um, and kind of chronicling where the Clarinet Association came from. We weren't always the ICA. We were a, a merge, if you will, of a couple different organizations. And um, this is a great place to learn about where the organization has been and where it is going. And we're going to probably update this a great deal next year um, with our new historian. I think this is Jean-Marie Paul, I believe, has stepped in to be the new historian. So we're going to work with him to update this information and make sure that it's the most accurate. Obviously, um, we have some more secretaries since Denise was secretary. <laughs> so we have to update this information. But there's still a lot of information here that is valuable and interesting, especially if you want to know sort of historically how this industry has grown, for example. Um, and it, it's, it's really, we had an article a couple months ago, it may have been maybe over a year, um, about Larry Lincoln, who was one of the founders of NAM, And he talked about the growth of the music industry and how their festival with NAM grew from a couple people that they knew, you know, a couple hundred people to something massive that we can't even fathom. Us being clarinet, uh, the clarinet fest rarely gets over 2000 people, but NAM is, is you know, massive, 100,000 people or something like that. So mm -hmm. he talked about how that, that growth is exponential and clarinet fest is sort of like that too. Just in my <laughs> looking the other day at the article in the 87 journal that I looked at, it said anticipated attendance 200. Oh, so wow. it's, it's really great to think in that short period of time, Clarinet Fest has grown to be over 2000 people and much more involvement from international members. And we're continually working on that, especially with the um, inclusion of our new international vice president and our um, international um, Luca, Luca, Soraka, yeah, he's, he's helping us to really reach out and um, grow our membership appropriately to be the International Clarinet Association rather than just, hey, we're in the US and you're in France and, and maybe that one guy over in Italy can be <laughs> in the ICA. It's for everybody, right? Every ability level, every, every country, every place. It's exciting. So, yes, very much. Yeah. So history. Definitely check that out. Um, the Clarinet Journal, a couple things I could mention. If you know someone who'd like to advertise, have them email me. We have um, the updated advertising information will be stored here. If you'd like to write for the Clarinet Journal, um, not just for the print journal, but also for the TCO, the Clarinet Online component, we accept articles on a variety of topics all the time. Um, and we also have contacts if you'd like to be a reviewer and you're interested in, in writing some reviews about sheet music or recordings, you can um, come here to the contacts of the clarinet page and you can find my information here as well as Rachel Yoder, who's our editor, um, Greg Barrett, who is in charge of music reviews and Kip Franklin in charge of audio reviews. So if you release a CD and you'd like to get that CD reviewed, you're going to reach out to Kip and have it sent to him and he will take care of that. Same thing if you're publishing a new piece of music 
or an arrangement of some kind or a method book, for example, you would send them to Greg and he's going to disseminate them. But you also reach out to them individually if you would like to review things. And we're always looking for new people to review because we don't want the same people all the time. It, it's a little biased that way. We get the same people. So if you are interested in sub submitting a feature article or a news event um, to be um, reviewed or put into the journal, um, we have a calendar of submissions that you need to abide by um, in order to be considered. We'll accept a submission at any time, but you have to understand that if you come in past a deadline, we're going to push you back to the next review deadline just for, for contingency or not con consistency. That's the word, the other C word. Mm -hmm. So there's all the context again, event reports and typical length and style guides and all that good stuff that if you're in academics, you kind of understand <laughs> what you're looking at here. Uh, how are we doing on time? Did I go over already? Uh, no, you're good. You've okay. got 20 minutes. Okay. A um, couple more things. Um, archives, we have, and this is going to get better. Um, this is going to be something that our social media committee is going to be working on. Um, we have some older articles that were published prior to the, the clarinet being published. So some of these are, are listed here. And we're also going to pull some historical articles from the clarinet and actually provide them here free of cost to anybody who would like to use them. So as an open resource. And, and these are going to be tried and true, like historical things like you see here, this Art of Slurring article by Daniel Bonad from the summer of 1951, which is <laughs> old logo here, which I need to change. But um, it's very short, but uh, many people know Daniel Bonad had a uh, an incredible methodology um, in his teaching about articulation, specifically in Aubusher. So there's some some really great articles here, and it's old format, but it is here at the very least. Some something by Portnoy about Aubusher. Like really, these are these are articles that are definitely everybody should read them. They're not long. Most of them are only a couple pages long. And um, we also have um, presentation archive here of some older Clarinet Fest presentations. By the way, if you presented in recent years and you'd like your research to be added here, please send it to me and I will put it on this list. Um, not exactly the most user-friendly <laughs> list of things to go through, but... And then we have a link archive of or organizations, companies, and we're always adding to this as well. So. If you're looking for a clarinet, you can come down here. There's a whole list of instrument makers that are listed there. And I think, yeah, this link page is just duplicated in there. So that has to be fixed. That's on me. Um, donate. I would love it if you would consider donating to the ICA. If you are a member and you uh, have the ability to donate your money, your donations go to a variety of uh, ICA projects. Um, most notably our competitions and our travel grants. Um, we have some, some specific awards, um, also adopt a member program. And we're doing the capital campaign. We have been for a couple years now where we're trying to sort of disconnect our reliance on Clarinet Fest for revenue uh, and sort of make ourselves a little bit more independent uh, financially. And that is primarily done through donations. So if you consider, you can come to the donate page um, and directly go this, this route, or you can write to me if you have things that you'd like to donate. Um, we just added today this donate a clarinet so we're going to get the get used clarinets in the hands of players that can't afford to get new instruments um, pretty much all over the world. So we encourage you to facilitate this with us. If you are a repair technician or you know someone that is and they would like to donate their time, um, we will reimburse for the materials used, but we would encourage them to repair an instrument um, that has been donated that might need a little bit of work. And then we will get that instrument in the hands of somebody that needs it. Now, if you are a person that needs a clarinet or you are a teacher with a student that needs a clarinet, we have a really easy form. You just come on here and select and type in this information. I'll get notified that you have filled it out and then we will work to get you what you need. Okay. Um, it's just, it's something that we've been talking about for a long time. So I'm really excited that we are going to be doing that much like our student discount. And um, we also have a, a sister organization uh, membership cost of $5. If you are a member in Italy or, 
or Japan or something like that, and you are a member of the German Clarinet Association, you can join the ICA for $5 um, with an online membership. It's just a really, a really great way to get more people um, involved in this wonderful community that we have. Um, am I missing anything? Um, the uh, Google Translation. Oh yeah, we did add this feature recently. Um, as with anything, Google Translate is not 100% African, or I, I'm looking at Africans as the top language, <laughs> accurate. Um, but it is going to give you a generalized, you know, knowledge of what is being said. So if you speak French, I do a little bit. Uh, you click on that on the drop down to French and Lycia, <laughs> ECA actually, Lycia. Uh, it, it will translate crudely, if you will, um, the, the contents of the article. Did my computer just, okay. Is it still there? Yep, it's still there. It's having a hard day today for some reason. <laughs> okay. So you can translate into your native language, and I believe it even works in symbolic languages with a different, uh, so Japanese, for example. It's probably going to, yeah. Yeah, it works pretty well. Again, if you are a Japanese speaker and you're reading that and it says something crazy, yeah, it's, it's Google Translate, so Korean. You know, um, but it works and we're going to hopefully continue this functionality and make it work better for everyone. And this is just one little thing that we can do to sort of make sure that we're not being exclusive. Now, we also um, in the blog and also in the journal, we've started a, an international spotlight series that uh, is wonderful and is bilingual articles primarily. The, the one from Africa is written by someone from South uh, Africa, so it's in English, but um, each version of the article is published. So this one is in French and we have one in Spanish here. Um, I know we have one in Chinese, Italian, and we're, we're going to keep doing, we're going to keep doing these articles as a series. And um, if you are a second language speaker and you would like to contribute an article in your native language, please do so. Um, we are not experts in your language, but um, we are happy to have content in all languages um, sent to us. So don't make, uh, don't, don't feel ashamed if you don't have the English chops to send us an article in English. We'll get you paired up with somebody that can help you translate it to English, but we will also publish the article in your native language because clarinet is for everyone. <laughs> and this is true for video content. Once we really start cracking on video content, we're gonna have um, videos in all different kinds of languages on embouchure, on reads, you name it, it's gonna be there. So I think I think that's the ICA webpage in a nutshell. I guess I could mention um, contacts. There's a phone number, you can call me. Um, it's, it's an automated phone system, but I get the call. So if you wanna chat with me, you can call me, I guess. <laughs> um, please don't call me at midnight or after that. <laughs> um, also, uh, our social media accounts, I can't uh, recommend um, going in and checking those out uh, enough, especially Instagram. Jenny works really, really hard to, to get the Instagram account um, going. We're, we're almost at 10,000 members on, on the Insta account, Insta account. And Facebook um, is the best place if you're on Facebook to get um, up-to-date information and news. And that's where we'll be sharing uh, Zoom panels like this one um, in the future, um, which I think we've had a couple panels scheduled this uh, for this month. And I know we're going to do a game show panel on October 2nd. I think it's going to be who wants to be a millionaire clarinet edition. So that'll be really interesting and fun. Um, so we hope you'll join us for those things. And we send out emails from time to time um, with different announcements and whatnot. So upcoming announcements will include the hotel co uh, code for clarinet fest and also registration when registration is open, which should be soon for clarinet fest. We're hoping to get that done um, pretty soon. So ta-da. <laughs> ta-da. Great job, Jessica. I'm drink some water. Yeah, there's so many exciting things coming, and uh, we've got a lot of new ideas, some things we can't share yet, but we're so excited to be able to share with you soon. Yeah. And doing a great job at being at the helm of all this and helping us get that out to you. Yeah, we will be. I will go ahead and say um, in the coming months, we're going to be adding a forum to the ICA page because we've heard a lot of members say that we need a place to talk 
open and and to discuss all these different topics. So um, we're going to add a forum to the website and we'll let you know when it's up and running. And um, obviously we're gonna need as much help as we can moderating it for spam and things like that. But um, it's gonna be a really valuable asset and um, we hope that you'll help us curate it with really great conversation and content going forward. So please look forward to that. Right, a safe place to gather to talk about clarinet. Yeah. So. We need that more than ever right now because we can't do it in person as much. So, yes. Jessica, could you also talk about um, the potential for people participating as part of committees? Yes, uh, we are on the cusp of launching several different committees. Um, I can pull up the form if you give me a second. It's not completely done yet, but I'll give you a sneak peek. We have, in the past, we've had some committees but we are branching out and we want more people to be involved in the ICA and our mission. And the more people we have working with us, the more we can achieve um, for the clarinet community. So what we're going to do, um, and we'll probably post an announcement about this probably early next week, um, but we're going to introduce a bunch of committees and we want to invite you to join the committee um, of your choosing. Um, based on your interests and your knowledge and what you can contribute and things that you may want to help the ICA further our knowledge and things that we can do to sort of grow these, these different facets of our organization. So um, we've had in the past a youth committee, it's kind of defunct right now. So we're kind of working to rebuild that, but um, we're adding a health and wellness committee, a pedagogy committee, a new music committee, a diversity committee, which has already been formed and met, which is wonderful, but um, we're going to be adding some new members to that committee as well. Social media committee and a clarinet enthusiasts or, you know, amateur, whatever term you want to use. We like to say enthusiasts instead because amateur is kind of a derogatory term, but uh, enthusiasts. So all of these are committees that you can be a part of and the committees will meet um, at the very least, I'd say bi-monthly, not bi-monthly, by month every other month <laughs> i don't want to i don't know the term this demi monthly bi monthly um every other month they're going to meet at least every other month um to work on specific projects that we've got going on um the new music committee is going to be working on a diversity um catalog for um sheet music for diverse composers to to really um make sure that everyone has access and um, knowledge about what kind of music is available to you from diverse backgrounds. So we're going to work on that um, in collaboration with the diversity committee, obviously. And the social media committee is going to be soliciting um, projects and content from people and figuring out the best way to curate that we may, if TikTok stays around in some way, we may work um, on creating a TikTok for the ICA. Haven't discussed it yet, but it's something that might happen, maybe. Um, the pedagogy committee is going to be curating a massive database of video content um, with the help of, of Denise and Diane, I think. <laughs> We're going to work to create content um, for different pedagogical topics like embouchure, like little short videos that teach you very, you know, introductory level and sometimes advanced concepts that you may be interested to learn about. Uh, and the health and wellness committee is going to do exactly what it sounds like it's going to do. Um, right now that is going to focus a little bit on COVID and we have already started some COVID related articles and we've contributed to some of the research coming out of um, the University of Iowa. The ICA donated some money to help further that research. But the health and wellness committee is going to talk about yoga and talk about um, mind and body and spiritual wellness as, as that applies to studying music and what music can do for you um, and your mental health as well. So those are all things that we're going to really kind of work hard on. And as you can see, we're, we're like bubbling up with excitement about this because just thinking about all of the potential for content and, and information, I'm going to like be a sponge with all this stuff. So I can't wait to do that. So look for this application and we'll announce it on social media. We'll also send an email blast to encourage people to sign up for this. Um, you have to be a member of the ICA, but um, Hopefully, if you're not a member currently, you will consider doing that after this wonderful, riveting uh, presentation <laughs> about all the things that, that you can gain from being a member here. The committees really excite me because we have such a wealth of knowledge in our membership. Right. And to bring that together, just think what we can do if we work together, you know, mm -hmm. to make that happen. Yeah. I think that's all that I have. 
I've seen like three errors in the website that I have to fix just looking at it. So thank you for helping me do my job. <laughs> um, I just love how this website has evolved over the years. And I feel like we are on such a great tra trajectory forward to make this for everybody, you know, of all nationalities, of, of all ages and levels of, you know, it's just... There is some, we want this to be something for everyone and, and it's already that, and it's going to be all that and more yes. in the months to come. Yeah. Exciting times right now. I'm very, very happy. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot going on that we can't talk about, but, but it's going to be so cool. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> so, um, but if you, um, one other thing about second language speakers, if you are a second language speaker, or if you know someone that, that speaks you know, Spanish or French or I don't know, Finnish. I don't know. Is that a language? I think so. Yeah. If you speak one of those languages, Korean, and you would like to help us translate some of these historical articles, please write to me. Um, we would love to get these um, available to other people. And it only extends the reach and extends the connection that we can make with other clarinetists all over the world. So um, if you have that skill and you'd like to donate that, maybe that's another committee in the future. Mm -hmm. um, translation project or something like that, that we can have for, for a bunch of different things, because, you know, Google translate is good, but it's, it's still faulty in a lot of ways. And it doesn't capture the nuance in different languages that um, are necessary for these um, articles. So please consider um, helping us with that in the future. How did I do? Pretty you good. did beautifully. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. So I, I think questions? we can, yeah, no, there haven't been any questions, unfortunately, okay. because, well, quite frankly, you covered it beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just hope that, you know, those of you who are watching, um, most certainly, if you are current teachers, please share this video with your students. Um, this will remain on our Amakitia Duo page, and we will eventually have this on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and I just think this is really such an informative um, session, uh, how to use this beautiful uh, resource that we have. I guess we have a classified section. If you're a member and you want to sell something, um, you can actually post that here, but nobody does it. Um, same <laughs> thing with a calendar. If you have a concert coming up and you'd like to advertise your concert, um, nobody does that. So those are two things that you can do. You just have to let us know. Fantastic. <laughs> Jessica, okay. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for letting me uh, to share this information with people. And, and I am always available. You can call the ICA phone number. You can email me. You can send me a message on, on social media. I'm, I'm here for you um, with your clarinet, burning clarinet desires. Please <laughs> reach out to me and I will be, do my best. If I can't answer your question, I will find the answer for you. That's always the best way as a teacher. If you don't know the answer, I will find somebody that does and I will learn in the process. Yeah, and if you have ideas about the, the direction you would like to see us go, or you have ideas to help make things better or more beneficial for members um, that are not just you know music majors or college professors, we would love to hear that because that's our goal. And you can reach out to Jessica, edo at clarinet.org. You can reach out to me, president at, sorry, at clarinet.org, and Diane at president-elect at clarinet.org. Um, all the board members would be happy to speak with you. Uh, but Jessica is a great quick place to go to get the information. But we would love to hear from you. We really want to represent the entire membership and make this a very special place that everyone feels welcome and wants to be a part of. So. Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much, Jessica. Mm -hmm. This has been Thanks a great ending. Me. Yes. This has been a great ending to our first day of the Amakate. Amakitia Clarinet Extravaganza, and we hope to see uh, some of you and, oh, well, all of you and more tomorrow. And I think, Denise, we start at 10 a.m., right? 10 a.m. Central. 10 a.m. Central with our band directors forum. And then we have a little lunch break, and then we have two great sessions in the afternoon on um, how to get a college teaching job, basically, um, and professionalism. So we hope you enjoy uh, today's sessions and have a great rest of your day. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so much.